Does anyone have a motive? Someone may have wanted to steal Edgar's cryptocurrency, but they didn't have to kill him for that. Someone may have wanted to stop the wedding, but Edgar didn't have to die to prevent the wedding. And in fact, no one tried to stop the wedding. Okay, forget motive. Someone could have given Edgar the devil's trumpet and killed him in 30 minutes. But Edgar lived 35 minutes after Grace took him to bed. So he got an extra five minutes of life. And that's only if he was poisoned the second Grace took him. He might have been poisoned 15 minutes early. So did he have 20 extra minutes before the poison killed him? Hmm. I'm going to have to run it by my great girlfriend, Veronica, in Poland. Let's solve the after party. Season two, episode three, Travis. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on the hunt to learn who killed Edgar the Groom and Roxana the Lizard. Spoilers for Season 1 and the first three episodes of Season 2 of The After Party. If you haven't seen all ten episodes, pause this video, cough up a couple of hams to Apple TV to pay for the subscription, and then come back and watch this video. Use the timestamps below to jump to the topic or suspect you want to hear about and skip past the stuff you don't want to hear. If you're watching this on YouTube, we could always use a like, a subscription, and a comment. Don't do it for us, do it for Roxana. And also, hey, let's share these clues. And in fact, let's look at this week's bonus clue. This one's a doozy. Look at the left hand of the screen, and there are these stars. And then on the right hand of the screen, there's names. Now let's use the top as an example. There's six stars on the left. So let's go to the sixth letter in the name Washington. That's an N. Next up, there are nine stars on the left. Let's go to the ninth letter in Livingston. That's an O, N-O, you get the idea. This week, there is either a mistake on the producers or it's kidding us. Because you do this back and forth, you're gonna end up with not a suicide. A is E-Y, not a suicide. Now, if you look at that A, it's the sixth letter in Chamberlain. But if they had meant the fifth letter in Chamberlain, it would have been B. And so the message would have been not by suicide. But instead, it's not a suicide. Is this a Canadian joke? What do you think? Did anyone think Edgar and Roxanne committed suicide? Before we run down the suspects, let's look at what episode three taught us about the victims, Edgar and Roxanna. As we mentioned last week, they hit up right at the top. Edgar had a prescription for Adderall, even though Grace said he had told her no pharmaceuticals. The third cuff link in Edgar's pocket was the G that we talked about last week. But it wasn't really a cuff link, it was a typewriter key. We talked about this at the top. 35 minutes after Grace took Edward to bed, he was dead. Now, did that 35 minutes mean once she put him in the bed? once she left the after party with Edgar, we don't know where that 35 minute clock starts. But as mentioned before, at the end of the episode, it implies the devil's trumpet kills people in 30 minutes, not 35. Edgar's cryptocurrency company is called Bocephalus Coin. The five big investors in the cryptocurrency business are just shell companies that are also owned by Edgar. Edgar got a pilot license a month before the wedding, and now we gotta go in another rabbit hole. In the first episode, Isabel, Edgar's mother, said Edgar died in his sleep just like his father did. But if you look at certain background clues, like this newspaper article, it implies that Alexander Minnows died in a plane crash. Was he asleep in the plane? Does this mean that Alexander Minnows died in a plane crash, but Edgar's father was somebody else who died in his sleep? What's going on here? Travis is convinced that Edgar was trying to fake his own death. He did have all these books of magic. But is it possible that Edgar's father, or whoever Alexander Minnows was, was the person who faked his own death? Edgar had that SEC4 code in his desk. And this one is brilliant. Somebody on Reddit known as Signs and Wonders figured out that SEC4 stands for Sebastian Edgar Connect 4 Matches, and this long code is just Edgar keeping track of their Connect Four competitions. If you look at it, Edgar really did kill Sebastian. Look, here he's ahead like 17 victories to two losses. According to Travis, as Edgar left the first dance, when he got that beep on his watch, he went to the house. 
and note a woman left shortly after Travis did left the reception tent in a dark dress of the characters we know that is most likely Zoe. At the after party in Travis's telling, Edgar has a drink in his hand and he brings his hand off the glass and he looks at his fingers. Was the glass laced with hallucinogens? Now we have three different versions of the outburst Edgar had at the after party. In Anique's version, Edgar said, and even that bounding hound of hell, I don't trust him. In Grace's version, he said, Cerebus, bounding at the gates of hell. In Travis's version, he's talking about Baskerville rides in the nighttime. Is he talking about Colonel out the window? Or is he pointing to his sister Hannah, who's by the window? Okay, let's look at the suspects. And let's start with a new suspect this week. We're calling it The Field meaning not one of our big characters, but the field. It could be Kyler, the social media person, or maybe the DJ, or the wedding photographer. Let's focus on the DJ first. As Travis speaks to him, the DJ is texting on his phone. Is he telling someone, maybe an associate, hey, Travis knows we're about to commit a crime, knock him out? Is the DJ texting Edgar's watch to tell him, oh no, Roxanne is missing, I've gotta go? Hmm. Fang, the father of the bride. Now, in Travis's version, Fang doesn't recognize him, so how long did Travis really go out with his daughter Grace? Where did Fang go at the rehearsal dinner when Uncle Ulysses arrived? The one place we can feel safe he didn't go was to Edgar's office, because that's where Travis went, and that's where Sebastian went, and Fang wasn't to be seen. Grace the Bride Grace and Travis bonded over steampunk. Grace also asks, hey Zoe, how did you solve the first killing? When Zoe says, oh, we caught him because people's stories contradicted someone else's. Grace makes a face. What did she say that's untrue, that's going to be contradicted by someone else? Hannah, the groom's sister, who, I just found out, was adopted. Why didn't anybody tell me? Travis believes that Hannah came on to him at the rehearsal dinner. Hannah, as we all know, has these crazy flowers, including poisonous flowers, and in fact, she's wearing one on her suit in Travis's story. Travis says that Hannah wanted to stop the wedding, but she didn't. Why not? Isabel, the mother of the groom. Travis comes up to Isabel and says, hey, I know about your firstborn. But based on what we know, Edgar is Isabel's only born. She doesn't have a firstborn. If, as we're just now finding out, Hannah was adopted, who could be the other child? Sebastian Drapewood. Sebastian realizes something, like a missing puzzle piece to something he's trying to solve when he mentions that Edgar's cryptocurrency is named after Bocephalus, Alexander the Great's horse. What did Sebastian realize? It seemed to be something about Alexander Minnow's horse. Maybe? Travis Gladrise. Travis lives at 3932 Thieves Highway in Fresno, California, 93711. Thieves Highway is the name of a 1949 noir film starring that great actor Lee J. Cobb. Travis lives with his mom, his office is also his bedroom, and in case you forgot which streaming service hosts the after party, Travis has a big Apple computer on his desk, just like Edgar does. We don't talk about the comedy on these videos enough. These Google searches on Travis's computer were hilarious. The whole episode was hilarious. What did you think? Did you find it hilarious? Now, Travis did lose all his money in a crypto scam. If Edgar was involved in that in any way, that would provide at least somebody a good motive to kill Edgar. Travis says he found a hidden message in the RSVP announcement. Tech scam. Will we need to find a similar hidden message? I see one right here. I'll end you. Now, on the day of the wedding, Travis arrives at the wedding in a shoe taxi company number 115. This wait staff member, who let's go ahead and put in the field, he's the same one who didn't like Anique saying he may have been in prison, or a French prison. Travis believes someone ran past him in the morning when Gray screamed, but why? Edgar had been dead for hours. Okay, let's pause for a second and let's talk about a happy ending point theory. Season one of The After Party ended in a happy ending, at least as far as a murder mystery can have a happy ending. Anique and Zoe had become a couple, Danner proved she could solve a murder case and be a true detective. And while, yes, one of Anique's good friends turned out to be a premeditated murderer, the victim Xavier was such a cad viewers could be forgiven for not caring about his demise. This season, it's different. The Edgar we've been presented is awkward, but he seems nice. He has a bride who claims to love him. 
mother and sister who cared for him, how can this season have a happy ending? This was brought up in feedback by Quincy last week, but if one of Zoe's family members are the killer, her sister, her mom, her dad, or uncle, how could you have a happy ending? So should we eliminate Zoe and Grace's family completely? But let's go further. If we really want a happy ending, doesn't the audience want Grace to also have a happy ending? But how could she if the love of her life died on her wedding night? Well, you could give Grace a somewhat happy ending by having her find real true love with Hannah. But that would mean eliminating Hannah as a suspect too. So to get a happy ending, in this theory, we're down to three suspects. Isabel, Sebastian, or Travis. I guess we could count the field as well. This problem with getting that potential happy ending endpoint is one of the reasons I'm not entirely writing off a final solution that includes Edgar's death being a tragic accident. I mean, couldn't Roxana have crawled through the centerpiece, touched the devil's trumpet, got the poison on her, and then accidentally given it to Edgar when Edgar picked her up? What do you guys think? Is there any way for this to be a happy ending? And let's get to your feedback to see what you guys think. Lonely One wrote, Right now, the only suspect I've cleared in my own head canon is Travis. The ex-boyfriend being the killer seems too on the nose, and the teapot thing felt like something to deliberately throw the audience off. Lonely One writes, I don't think there's such a thing as a happy ending in a show that begins with a murder or two, so nothing is off the table yet. Scott wrote, Cufflinks or Roxana likely have something to do with unlocking Edgar's crypto wallet. The typewriter itself might even be involved. Mang wrote, I think it's Grace. Ooh, well that's not going to be a happy ending for some, Mang, but love that guess. Son of Hera wrote, What are the answers to Anik's puzzle that you get on the edgarandgracewedding.com after you put in the password TULIP on the website? I don't want to go too deep into those because I don't know if those necessarily are needed to solve the crime. Did you figure out the flower you needed to put in for week three? Look at this one book on Edward's shelf and think of the first letter in each word of the title, an author. It spells out a flower. Put that in. That'll get you into this week's puzzle. Raider Lux wrote, Hannah is someone to me I'm really suspicious of. Did she have a crush on her adopted brother, Edgar? or his bride. Sahar wrote, Thank you for putting this all together in a video. It's much faster than reading through Reddit, lol. Thank you for saying that. Hey, if you like this video, I really need likes, we need subscriptions, we need your comments. But let me also say, I do put things in these videos that I don't see on Reddit, and that I don't put myself on Reddit, just because I want to add value when you watch this. Hey, next week we're going to hear Hannah's story, what do you want to hear from Hannah? Let us know.